Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. So glad you're here. Okay, today we are going to do a one year later review on this beautiful turntable before your eyes. This is the U-Turn. Limited edition, ultraviolet sort of a custom job from U-Turn. It was a limited run. Specifically what's limited about it is the color, the ultraviolet color, which is gorgeous. And I'm looking on camera, it looks looks blue on camera actually, but it's really a lavender, a purple. That's really interesting how that, some colors just don't, depending on the color temperature too. Let me change the color temperature of the light here. Let's see if we can get it to react. Yeah, that's a little closer. That's a little closer. I'm feeding it more daylight color light there. Let me turn it up a little bit. That's a little closer. It's a little more purple than it's looking yet still. Anyway, this is a beautiful turntable from uh, U-Turn. And as you may know, we've we reviewed everything they've got. Literally, we reviewed the basic, which is $179. If you want to get a good turntable, and very few people, there are a few people out there that dump on U-Turn, which is, in my opinion, completely unfounded because it's a fantastic product and an even more fantastic story. But, you know, for $179, you can get their entry-level turntable, which is not that much different than the U-Turn uh, Special, which is their high-end unit. They have three different tiers. And it basically comes down to finish, material, and cartridge and they can be sort of customized you can even do a custom config on their website pick the color pick the plant all that good stuff anyway rather than rehash all of that if you want to see reviews on um, all their turntables that they offer check out our other videos just type in u-turn we've reviewed both of their preamps as well so let's start from the top down it's got a very thick acrylic dust cover one of the things that was critical about their turntables and again the the entry level unit and the top of the line unit are all they're almost identical and that's what's great you know their $500 turntable is not that much different than their entry level turntable the entry level is not going to have a preamp it's not going to have a cueing lever it's going to have an MDF platter instead of the acrylic and it's going to have a basic cartridge but motor the mechanics the tone arm everything is going to be the same which is why it's such a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. If you want a fully manual turntable, it is not automatic. If, you, if you're a beginner, I still steer people to the LP60X because it's so automatic, it's foolproof. This requires you know a little bit of finicky work, not in a bad way, but just queuing up a record pretty much. Some people don't want to deal with that. Uh, but one of the things I was critical with right off the bat is the hinges are just little bent plastic tabs in the back there. And so you can kind of see it's kind of, I don't want to say janky, but it's it's delicate. That's the word I used when I first reviewed it too. I can't think of a better word. It's functional. It works. It's just not a robust hinge. It's not even a hinge. So I'm going to take this off. The dust cover just sits with these little notches on the acrylic onto the, uh, the little buttons on the back here. And this is just a little, it's a little creased plastic tab. Now the belt is off and you're going to say, why is the belt like that? What's wrong with it? Well, uh, when I carried it from the other room in here, it's pinched under there. That's great. Um, when I carried it from the other room, it, it worked itself loose, which is another one of my criticisms. Probably the only two criticisms I have is that the belt can be difficult to manage and the fact that the lid is a little bit, you know, it is what it is. So if you upgrade from the MDF plinth, you get the acrylic or platter, not plinth. If you upgrade from the acrylic from the MDF platter, you can get this beautiful acrylic platter. It is very heavy. I mean, this is a hefty, hefty platter. And it literally is a, a slice, a thick slice of acrylic. The benefits are, aside from the acoustic properties of acrylic, which if you have an acrylic platter mat, you know about that. The other benefits are that its weight uh, increase the mass inertia so basically when it's spinning it has a certain amount of inertia and mass inertia prevents variations in speed from the motor from creating wow and flutter so basically it's smoother spinning because of the weight 
of this. Now, one of the genius ways that U-Turn is able to offer this turntable, I gotta find a place to set this down for a minute. One, one of the reasons why they're able to offer these at such great prices is they have a genius approach to um, sourcing materials. For instance, that acrylic slice, they buy the acrylic in giant eight foot sheets that are pre-finished on both sides and all they have to do is die cut out that the the shape that they want it's already you know pre finished on both sides it's thickness is there it's molded it's whatever and it's ready to go all they have to do is die cut out the shape that they want so they're able to save cost by doing so i think they use a company in minnesota for that and the other one is on the motors now these are really good motors now what they do is they buy uh chinese motors that are low they're a they're a low yield i always get this wrong Basically, they buy them in bulk, and they cherry-pick the good ones. But because, because they're buying them in bulk, they get the good motor for the price of a lot less because they're not having to pay the higher expense for the better motor. They pay for the cheaper motors, then they cherry-pick the ones that bench test out to the perfect spec. So it's another genius idea that motors are fantastic. Um, other innovations, you know, I would say of theirs are this thing right here. This is the inverted, um, what's the term, um, the spindle. It's an inverted, gosh, what is the word? I, I do this all the time. When I start rolling, I lose like 80% of my vocabulary. Anyway, this, uh, you're gonna, I'm going to have 500 comments of telling me what the word is. But it's a good one. It's got very low drag. It's inverted so that the uh, the bearing. There you go. It's a bearing. Thank you very much. I got there. You can delete your comment now. Just kidding. <laughs> but it does great. I mean, this is a good resin that they use. As you can tell, it's not a cheap, you know, molded plastic. It's a it's a good quality resin, and it's simple. I mean, the design of this turntable is you know based on simplicity. If you put the, I mean, even just spinning this, it just goes and goes and goes. But if you put the uh, that heavy platter on there, it'll go for a year and a half. Uh, the tone arm does have a counterbalance. Let me zoom back out here. The tone arm does have a counterbalance. The anti-skate is there. It does have anti-skate. It's set at the factory. So that's always brought up a question of mine. If you wanted to upgrade the cartridge, which you could do, although you configure it with the one you want. So ideally, you don't have to do that. But if for whatever reason you change your mind, you may be saying, well, how are you going to adjust the the um, the anti-skate then if it's preset at the factory that's a that's a good question right here we've got the grado black cartridge on here a beautiful warm sounding cartridge not unlike the grado gold prestige 2 that we looked at recently if i tilt this up i don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver here what did i draw okay there goes the pairing so it's got three feet three feet is more stable than four because with three points of contact there's never a, a foot that's not making contact. So that is why they do it that way. This unit, so this is the power supply right here, which is literally just braided, corded to the uh, switch up there. This is the bottom of this. And then over here, you literally have the audio connections. This one does not have a built-in preamp. You can get it with a built-in preamp. These are assembled by hand in Boston, you guys. And Paul is the dude that said, yep, this one meets spec. It's ready to go. And there's that hinge again I was telling you about. Just did. Yeah. I wish they'd upgrade that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's flip it over here. Kind of confined quarters here. I apologize for that. But again, being able to film at night is a blessing. Let's put this back on here. Let's go ahead and grab the platter again. Put it on here it's got fingerprints but in the real world situation i wouldn't let allow there to be you know fingerprints so platter wobble is almost non-existent it is it's fantastic it's all precision made it's all precision made it uses a tubular belt which is interesting i wish that there was a channel cut along the edge of the platter because let me show you how you set the belt so there's two settings here if I remember correctly, 33 is the smaller one and 45 is the larger setting on the on the motor spindle. And you literally just have to stretch it out like this very gently. 
And the first thing you're going to think when you do this is, man, that belt seems loose. Like, is it going to roll off? And it doesn't roll off. It really doesn't roll off. Let me go ahead and flip it on. And it's going to come to life. This is literally the start and stop. I mean, it, it doesn't have a true power on and off. It has a motor start and stop. As you can see, that doesn't slip. I've never had the belt come off when it's spinning, when it's playing. Never, ever, 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 ever. I have had it come off when I'm trying to change speeds. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And I've had the belt come off when I'm carrying it, like when I brought it in here. And in order to change speeds, you literally have to pull the belt back to the next cog back there. Let me try to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. And it just adjusted the light. So as you can see here, there's two settings, depending on what speed. That's 45, I believe. And then if you leave it at 45, which is a little bit more stretched of a position, it makes you wonder, well, is it stretching the belt? But it goes right back, it spins pretty dang accurately from what I can tell. In fact, let's go ahead and test that. Why not? I'm gonna drop this baby on while it's spinning. Whoa, did you hear that? That was weird. Okay, so. Interesting, so that's 45 actually, that setting right there. And it looks just about perfect. It's gonna be this ring right here. Just about perfect. It uses an AC synchronous motor, so it's not speed adjustable. Okay, here's 33. Now it is marching back quite a bit. It's a little fast there. Interesting. Hmm. That's really, really interesting. Let me zoom in a little bit there. Huh. And then going to the other speed. That should be 45. Very interesting. 45 there. Oops. The inner ring. It's actually 33 though. That smaller cog position should be 33. You can tell I haven't played with this turntable in a while. So this is actually 33. So what we should be looking at is this ring right there. Hmm. Very interesting. I may have to try with an incandescent light. It's hard to tell by the eye and I don't trust the shutter speed on the camera. Um, anyhow, let's go ahead and zoom back out. In terms of the actual speed as experience in terms of pitch, it sounds perfect. So. There may be a variation there. There may be an issue. I don't know. I don't know. Of all the U-turns, I've never had a speed issue in terms of all well, the pitches off. It's usually you go off by 3% on speed, which in turn affects the pitch. Usually you can notice right away, and I've never, never noticed. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. It's a simple device. It's a simple device. I've got it. I'm going to plug it in here to this preamp. This is a Crosley P10. This is my workhorse preamp. It's not fancy, it's not super high-end, but it does the job. Now, I'm doing this as though you can see it. Let me, let me pull this closer to you because I do want you to see what I'm doing here. So look at this preamp. I mean, it's basic. It's the P10 Crosley preamp. And you'll notice something, that there's no ground connected to this. The P10 has a ground terminal. But there was no ground connection on the back of the turntable, which is weird for a turntable that requires a preamp. Because typically, the, the cable will have a separate lead for the ground, because you need to ground it if, it doesn't, if it's using an external preamp. So one of my viewers, maybe you're watching this video, I hope you are, reached out recently and, and asked me this, and I didn't know. I said, well, let's t ask, ask U-Turn and see what they say. So he wrote to them. And they said, that's a good observation, what it does, the way it works is this. So the U-turn is designed to ground through the left terminal RCA cable. So it is actually grounding via that left terminal. It works fine. I've never seen a turntable do that, but it works fine. Okay, guys, we're running a little long here, so let's go ahead and do a little sound test. I've got this connected via this preamp to uh, my Crosley S100s off camera here. 
and let's go ahead and like I said also the uh, the tone arm lift is a uh, is an extra I think it's forty dollars extra for this you can the bare bones one hundred and seventy dollar U turn does not come with the lift or the built in preamp okay. So we are spinning at 45 and we need to be spinning at 33. So yeah, some people don't like touching the belt. They don't like external belts. I personally think external belts are cool. I've never had an issue from touching a belt. They also give you an extra belt, which is a good thing. So let's go ahead and listen to this a little bit. The speakers are not really close. They're about three feet away, not pointed at the mic, so my apologies there. Sounds good to my ears. Sounds really, really good to my ears. It's a great turntable. I love the great O sound. I love it. Okay. One thing that drives me nuts about the Crosley S100 speakers is instead of having a volume knob, it has this little clicky volume. So every time you hear this chick -chick -chick -chick, when I'm setting volume with these, that's why. It's so annoying. Anyway, that's going to do it, you guys. If you are interested in buying a U-turn, I'm going to put some links down below so you can check them out. Also, if you just want to support the channel, and many of you have, and I very much appreciate it, you can now buy me a coffee, which is really cool. And down uh, in the description below and in the About tab is a link on how to do that, as well as links to purchase your very own Recordology merchandise, which again, I would appreciate so very much. All the proceeds go to help support the channel and bring the cool content that you guys want to see. And I'm trying my best to make it a fun, you know, escapism-centric channel where we can just forget all our troubles for... 10, 15, or in this case, 17 minutes and just have fun. So, all right, guys, God bless each and every one of you. That's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.